You're listening to Tripod, the tricycle creative podcast created to help entrepreneurs be better marketers. Each episode features news, tips, interviews, and commentary from the worlds of marketing, media, and, well, miscellaneous. Now, here are your co-hosts, Ross Erosion and Chris Slezak. It is Tripod. It is episode 12, and that is what you are listening to. I am Ross, founder and CEO of Tricycle Creative, and joined, as always, on this show, the Zach Morris to my building, Chris Slezak. What's up, preppy? <laughs> you kids, you're always pranking me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think Belding had a catchphrase. Am I right on that? He didn't have a I catchphrase. I don't think he did. Not Just that I general know. idiocy is his catchphrase. Right. Just uh, bumbling about. Just bumbling about. So let's. Zach. Zach. So, well, um, it's been a little while. We had a couple, we had a little interview um, in this past week to share with you. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, But we are back. We are um, enjoying. Are we in the end of summer ish yet? Or are we just getting into summer, Chris? Oh, it doesn't August feel like it. I think we're just getting into it. I what think is we're today? in the meat of it right now. This is being recorded August 12th, 2019. It, it It's just insufferably hot here in Austin and uh, maybe wherever you are also. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I went to, to a pool this weekend, Chris. Uh well, I went to uh, – my in-laws were in town, and so we got some um, – we went to the Omni Hotel. No. No. Yes, the Omni. Hmm. And hung out with a lot of people that really we would not normally be allowed around, I think is, is really the biggest thing. Um, but it was lovely to have access to a pool. It's so counterintuitive when you first move to Texas. You would think everyone has a pool. Yet so few have pools. Yeah, I went to uh, I went to a to a natural pool. Yes. Weekend. Oh wait, was that in Austin? Or I know you. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. You I mean, traveled. right outside. Well, oh. this week, this, yeah, just recently, just this, just two days ago, I went Whoa. to a, to a nice no. natural pool, Hamilton pool. Swam under oh. like you know little drippings from a stalag tight i want to say uh tight is the top i think yeah there we go yeah. Stalag tight. Yeah. yeah yeah you can tune out now you've learned everything you're gonna learn on this show <laughs> stalactite talk coming up next we're gonna talk about asteroids and meteors what's the difference stay tuned <laughs> um no, this, if you are uh, tuning in for the first time, this is a um, marketing podcast. Um, extended. We like to talk about a lot of things. We talk about typically three things every show. Marketing, media, and geology. And at- oh. <laughs> what did you say? Geology. Geology. Yes, those are our three topics. Um, and miscellaneous, which... I guess technically could include geology. Um, Chris usually comes up with the miscellaneous topic. So I am powerless to stop him. If he does have a segment today about geodes, Um, that's just what we're going to have to roll with. And maybe we'll all learn. So is your segment today about geodes, by the way, specifically amethyst geodes? Wow. Wow. You really dug deep. Uh, Pun intended. I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. Um, but no, very excited. Thank you for joining us. Um, like, subscribe, comment, wherever it is you are getting this podcast. We certainly appreciate it. Um, let's see. What, 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 what do we have lined up for today's show? Today's show, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, while it is August, uh, um, uh, I want to talk about there's been a report put out about the state of social for the year of 2019, which is uh, the year that we are in right now. Talk about some of the stats uh, from that report. Very interesting, uh, potentially useful for you to know. We're also going to talk about uh, digital assistance. While it's not particularly marketing, it is certainly media in that the companies that have that data, we talk a lot about 
uh, some of the data privacy pieces uh, here and how it can impact your marketing and, and just you being aware of uh, companies and what they're doing and how they're working. And then for the miscellaneous topic, Chris, what are we talking about today? I think time management, maybe. Time management. I think in I a broad sense. Yeah. Yeah. I love productivity. So I don't know. We were kicking around your thing earlier today. I don't, I, I, I don't have a solid, uh, I guess answer. Um, but I'm looking forward to the discussion because, um, I just, I love time That's management right. yeah. and productivity hacks. I so, think it'll be an, an open dialogue between the two of us. An open dialogue between two ferns. That's already used. We're not going to use that. So, uh, I fight. guess between two geodes is the name of our new interview segment. Uh, so with that, why don't we just get on with the show, Chris? Let's do it. So if we were to do a geode podcast, um, I'm trying to think of a name I, for what I, that. I think maybe we call ourselves OM geodes. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. How do you even come I up? I wish with I knew more about rocks. I wish. I wish that like I could sit here and tell the audience that there's like, oh, there's this incredible time delay that we edit out. There's not. He literally <laughs> comes up with this nonsense right off the top of his head. That's why I always say he's just the creator. He's the, he, he's that Zach Morris, man. Zach was always coming up with those zany <laughs> schemes. You're a real zany schemer. If I were ever, if someone asked me, what's Chris all about? I said, zany schemer. That's, that's usually, and they say, I don't know what that means. And, and they wild walk away. Guard. There's only wild. two of us, and yet There's I'm a wild card. <laughs> it's tough I'm, for you. I'm the instruction card that comes with that you just throw away. <laughs> what the is rules this? of Hoyle. Oh, the blank card? Whoever fills out a blank card that they put in those games, like Cards Against Humanity, who fills out the blanks? No one. No one. You can't live up to, the, to, to what they've already done. There's no blanks. Just throw them away. All right. We're going to talk about the state of social report uh that i found let me see i want to give kind of proper credit let me see who did it uh, oh buffer buffer does a fantastic job of doing a ton of really comprehensive um uh reports and research and analysis um i i actually use a lot of their data when it comes to helping clients and and the workshop i do on um the decreasing facebook reach which is still an issue um a lot of stuff in there from 20, even 2018 that's still very relevant. But we're talking about 2019, Chris. The year is 2019, Chris. We have hoverboards and we have flying cars. All right? Yeah. yeah so it's great. it is yeah. pretty sweet. So if yeah. this is in the time capsule, you missed out on a real sweet year, 2025. It's too bad it all went away. Yeah, where it's the nuclear apocalypse. Sorry. Um. So I want to talk first uh, category of stories. So we've talked, a, a, I think, a f occasionally and a fair amount about stories, particularly Instagram, right? I don't think it was this year. It was a couple years ago where Instagram kind of came out with stories, which by extension, Facebook came out with because Facebook owns Instagram. But to try and really eat Snapchat's lunch, which they've successfully pretty much done, 57% of brands say that stories have been somewhat effective to very effective. So a lot of brands are actually jumping in and have been using stories uh, as opposed to posts uh, for ads. So very specific um, uh, uh, ads and placements and content and stories. And the one thing a lot of people get confused about actually is uh, you can run Instagram ads. You have to do it as part of Facebook ads because Facebook is the big guy. You can run specific Instagram ads. It's just like Instagram is a placement. So you can actually run a campaign of just stories if you wanted to, but you have to do it through Facebook ads. A lot of people, a lot of my clients ask me, how do I run Instagram ads? Where is that? It, it's Facebook ads. It's just about a different placement. 
Um, and then from their respondents, they were saying 62% said they had yet to invest, but 61 said that they're going to. So you're going to see a lot more investment in stories ads. Have you noticed, Chris, uh, you're an avid grammar, if you will, Kelsey Grammar. You're an avid fan of Kelsey Grammar. Yeah. I'm just wondering if you've seen more ads about Kelsey Grammar recently in stories. Not as many as I would like, that's for sure. <laughs> um, no. And in fact, I'm scrolling through it now. I don't have any... Let me send you an ad right now. Just kidding. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't see any. He's scrolling ads. through it right now, folks. He's that in, he's he's that tuned into the show. That is my co-host. <laughs> I did it for the show. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't I, I I feel like I'm this guy every time we talk about something uh, social media wise. But like, I, I don't like it. You um, don't. You are the like grumpy I'm old just... man on the porch with a hose. You Pretty hate much. it. Yeah. You don't like the kids coming on your porch. Uh, your yeah. Porch. I'm actually I haven't noticed very many uh, stories. Yeah. Yet. You know. I, I haven't either. I do notice you get them a lot more when you kind of go on like what I would call like a story streak where like you're just in stories. Oh, sure. They pop up. Yeah, they pop up in you're between. Just in stories and you're just flying through them. Like swipe, you're swipe, right. swipe, 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 boom. That's yep, got one now. Up. Yep, you're right. Yeah. That's how it works. Versus just like going into one that and seeing like one person's story. That's pretty rare. Um, pretty rare. I think it's like you have to be like actively engaged in the stories ecosphere of like just going through stories a lot. That's when they pop up for sure, which is nice. But with all these people wanting to get in on that, if you remember from a previous podcast, we talked about Facebook running out of or, or running into an issue of actual ad space to give. Right. Um, they may run into that again when it comes to stories. Um, you know, it looks like they've they've bounced back and done just fine from that. Um, I actually thought and predicted, listen, I'm, and I'm not I'm not too smart or too <laughs> confident or too cocky of a person predicted that they'd be pushing a lot more into messaging. I'm still going to stick by it, but I actually it's hard for me to gauge because I don't use Facebook Messenger like I I I adamantly avoid it. I do not use Facebook Messenger. So it's hard for me to kind of get the read of the user and see like, oh, am I getting more ads in here? Do you use Facebook Messenger at all? Uh, or yeah. even, what's, even WhatsApp? I, which is I don't use of, WhatsApp. No, I don't use WhatsApp. But I yeah, I use Facebook Messenger. Do have you, you noticed in the past year any more ads or anything like that? Nope. Not noticeably. at all. Yeah, I feel um, bad that I seem to be off on that, but whatever. Now, and and, and actually, this report kind of proves it. 71% of the brands they um, surveyed in this said they're not using messaging apps for marketing. And most of them are not planning to use it. So that's actually a good sign because we talked about this before. It was the scary world of... Marketers loving that open rate on messengers on messenger campaigns was like five to 10 times as much as email. Do you remember this at all? Do you remember talking about this? It was a while back, but yeah, about how because obviously, when you get a message like a text and you get a little notification, you you want, I, at least, I want the notification to go away, so I'll click on it and I'll open it, right. Right. And I feel like it was it was almost like false positives where it's like, oh, open rate, you know, it's like, yeah, but it's right. So but much... it's open rate read rate. Yeah. yeah. Or is it just wipe it off my plate. Oh, uh, great. You know, that's not to say that when you get spam or email stuff that you don't do the same thing. But I was really worried that marketers were going to fall in love with the concept of this really huge open rate for messenger marketing. And then you're going to see a lot more of it. Facebook, to its credit, also makes it harder or has made it harder to do it. So if you want to do some messenger marketing, you have to actually submit like kind of an, uh, an application. Tricycle Creative's done it. We've been vetted. 
we're allowed to do it. I don't do it. Don't worry. I don't plan on doing it either. <laughs> but you have to submit like an application type thing and they have to approve it. Um, saying that you're essentially not going to spam people through Messenger. So it gets back to the whole thing is like it's their playground. They want to keep it clean, you know, but they still want to make money off of it. So they'll let you like, it's a playground. They'll let you drill for oil, but you just have to do it in the far corner of the playground, you know, like not near, not, ex- not right beside the merry-go-round. Right. Take it to the monkey bars. Take it. <laughs> Take it to the monkey bars, you kids. Now the big one, video marketing. So Facebook is by far still, or maybe the most popular channel for businesses that they survey to share video content. 81% said that, that Facebook was their kind of like go-to with a U with YouTube in second Instagram third. And then it looks like it kind of jumps to shark or at least what I pulled jumps. LinkedIn is fifth. I mean, I'm going to wager a guess that maybe, t- I don't know, Twitter is fourth. I don't know, but there's no fourth. There's no fourth place. No maybe one's in fourth Snapchat. place. I mean, I, I would be hard pressed to believe that the young, like the very youthful brand brand Cokes, Pepsi's. Is it? Look, and let, let's know, be real. Like, is it Pornhub? <laughs> oh, that's probably it. And, <laughs> that's and, why they don't want to say it. And, yeah. Uh, uh, <coughs> it does say here. Uh, um, it's a <laughs> <laughs> fourth. Uh, LinkedIn <laughs> would be quite a move. I think you would. I think that's an interesting campaign. I'm going to put a pin in that one. Um, so LinkedIn is fifth. I got to say, and and they are predicting this too, as a channel to watch in 2019. And by channel, I mean a, a platform, if you will, LinkedIn. Um, because this says early data showing that videos on LinkedIn are getting shared 20 plus times more than any other content on the platform. Really? Yeah. So video on LinkedIn. This is if you have video, get it on LinkedIn, even if that's just your personal page. So I know a lot of people have company pages. Tricycle Creative does. But um, put it on both. Do you think that's because it's like the most exciting thing on LinkedIn? (sighs) Maybe. I, you know, this is interesting. Here's where I'm at on social media right now. Um, trying to think of my hierarchy, if you will. Reddit, number one, always number one. Reddit's always number one. We never talk about Reddit and it, and if it stays the way it is, hopefully you'll never market on it. Thank you. Please don't do it. That's not what we do here. (laughs) That's not what we do on Reddit. Don't market. Okay. Reddit one, I suppose Facebook too, but it's a distant two. Instagram next. Uh, but LinkedIn is very quickly gaining steam. I am loving being on LinkedIn like all day long. I, I mean, it's, I don't know, man. Like all of a sudden I have turned and I'm really enjoying, but it's also because I am a chronicle, chronic nonfiction reader. I like business things. I yeah, like it's, share. I mean, it's for like, it's for grownups. It's for and and you know what? It's kind of feels like it's coming into its own in that way, which I know is weird to say now because it's like been around and is absolutely an established platform. But it's starting to feel like a a like a a viable content ecosphere. It used to be like you just you just put stuff there, or whatever. You just put it there, right? But now, like your timeline and your news feed equivalent is like. There's interesting stuff there, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm really enjoying LinkedIn. So my, my advice to you uh, for this show is get some content on LinkedIn. Use the hashtags too. There's hashtagging to kind of get it, you know, connected to other topics. Use them. I, I really enjoyed it. So, and sadly on the video front, just 12% of people said that their business had used IGTV in 2018 and 72% in 
said no intentions to create content for IGTV in 2019. Now, don't let that fool you. These things can turn very quickly. And I would say that sometimes things like that can be opportunity. Just, I don't want to call it like a, like hedge your bet, but experiment. IGTV, we talked about it before, now allows you to upload horizontal video, right? So it's easier than ever to upload content there. Instagram, by extension Facebook, is very much pushing IGTV still. And if and, and it's one of those things that if Facebook wants IGTV to be successful, they'll put money behind it or and or they'll boost the content that you're putting on it. So don't just throw that away as an option because I'm still seeing very strong signs of life from IGTV and you don't have to just create vertical stuff. It's long form. IGTV is Instagram's long form platform. Yeah. You know, you still don't watch IGTV. No, I don't. And in fact, yeah. I was, uh, I was going to say, I still stand by what I said last time, which is, it's a weird paradox that I could scroll through Instagram mm -hmm. for half an hour, looking at nothing, just looking at whatever comes by. Yeah. But if you wanted me to watch an, a, a, a show for half an hour on IGTV, right. I would I would be like, no, nah, I don't have time for that. I'll scroll for half an hour, but I yeah, won't yeah, yeah. sit there and watch it. It's a weird paradox. but Well, it's you know. hard because I think that, I mean, that plays into, though, <clears throat> I almost think by nature, the, 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 the social media mentality, you know, you're scrolling for the next something versus committing to anything. Right, and I think that's what <laughs> it is. I can put it down at any time, you know? Yeah, I can quit, yeah. I can quit any time. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. you could, friend. Sure you could. Yeah, if I'm committed to something, now I got to sit there and hold my phone in my hand until you know, until I figure out who done it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what kind of what do they got on there? Mysteries? <laughs> What's on IG? <laughs> Mysteries. I get the Christie. <laughs> All the yes. remakes. Yes. All of the uh, Angela Lansbury uh, specials are. <laughs> All are, the murder are, she wrote. All the murder now she on wrote. IGTV. <laughs> I gotta tell you, they had Golden Girls on IGTV. <laughs> I'd watch it. And you know what? I'll fight anyone that has cross words to say about Golden Girls because that show's funny. It's funny. It is well written and it's funny and it's timeless. Hashtag, and Chris, if you got a problem with that, we're we're gonna fight about it. Hashtag thank you for adding me as a friend. <laughs> God, I want to end on that, but I have more to this report. <laughs> you ruined me. <laughs> it's not even really important stuff, but I was shocked to see that when they surveyed the following channels your business use currently, Facebook, number one, 94%. Next was Instagram, or um, next was Twitter, 84%. I get. I would want. I would want use. What what following channels does your business use currently? I would like use defined. Instagram right. was at eighty one percent. Yeah, is it just a push? I mean, I, I, I was just really surprised by that. Still, I just, yeah. Well, um, and then lastly, the thing they talked about was um, how uh, asking. Um, these, these brands, how they tend to measure the return on investment of social media advertising. And the number one answer, uh, let's see, the number one answer on the board, ding, uh, engagement. So the number one way that they kind of measure the return is through engagement. The second, 51% uh, is traffic. And 48% after that is leads. Uh, which I think is makes sense for the top three. And I think that's a good order for them. Engagement, traffic, and leads uh, is, is kind of a good way. And I think it's the way that you should apply how you measure and setting goals and standards and, and uh, what have you for your own social media efforts. Um, engagement first, traffic second, leads third. Um, that is not nearly as good a way to end the segment as Chris's clever one well, line. 
but the, well, go ahead. I, I I'm looking at some of the other charts on on here, and I'm I'm curious about like this 0.5 percent who say that uh, social media is is very unimportant to their marketing strategy. And I'm curious, like what types of businesses those 0.5 percent are. You know, 0.5 percent. Say it's very, very unimportant. Very. Not just unimportant. Not just like we don't need it. It's very unimportant. If anything, it's detrimental to our business. Very unimportant. Those, when asked, when we asked the, uh, let's see here. Yeah, how did you get a hold of them? Uh, that's true. <laughs> they, they, they don't want to be found. This is, you know, these are people who are, and I don't know how they snuck into this, but these are... Um, uh, they are trading in um, uh, ivory. These are ivory traders. <laughs> these are yeah. These, you can't know about it. It's unimportant. We need to not be trapped. Human traffickers. <laughs> these are uh, drug dealers. These these are the, the 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 they'd prefer not to have social media, and they're really mad. When the co- when their cousin who they hired for the summer part time started. <laughs> a social media account for them. It just made things a lot more complicated, mm-hmm. you know, even though it was a TikTok account, it still made it <laughs> very <laughs> difficult for them to, to really conduct their business, you know, stop, stop tagging the location of where this photo was taken. This is, you're not helping. You're not, you're not helping the business. And I'd like to, I am the 0.5 percent i think those that's those are the industries that are or maybe they are um uh newspapers local newspapers <laughs> right they're right? trying to discourage the yeah they, they, they want to skew the results <laughs> <laughs> social media is no good you don't you don't want it it's not as good as our newspaper what we have so i think that is without looking into the details, I think that is the uh, 0.5%. I think you nailed it. This next one's good. I mean, I, I do, um, I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but I'm going to, I enjoy talking about privacy stuff. Um, obviously, Facebook steps in it all the time, uh, continuously, but there's other things uh, related to data privacy, data usage, um, that while directly you may not think, oh, this is going to make me a better marketer. I think it's important to understand so that you can make informed decisions of how much you want to utilize the technology marketing and digital marketing as a technology. Um, I mean, it's unlike a time ever before. And, um, this week I found an article, uh, what, uh, what, what was this on? What website was this on? Chris, was this a fast company? Yes. You remember? Fast company. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> as always, uh, everything that we reference and talk about will be in the show notes. You can find them all tripodpodcast.com. Again, that's tripodpodcast.com for the show notes. Um, so it was a, I believe an opinion piece pretty solidly I think, about talking about the digital assistant privacy scare. Um, and while the, the, the title seemed to be like, get over it. The article itself was kind of like, I don't know how I'm going to get over it. Did I misread it? Like, Chris, am I right on that? Yeah, that sounds right. Right? I mean, the, the, the title was like, get over it already. And then the, when when it was, when they were like saying, talking about how to get over it, I was like, I don't, this is a lot to get over. This is not a simple task of getting over. Um, but they talked a lot about um, the the aspect of this kind of like 1% that – Alexa and Siri record or hear that are sometimes margin of error, but are then reviewed by people, human beings reviewing these times where Siri or Alexa was, um, misfired, if you will. Right. Um, so it talks about the two types of kind of misfires. One's where users intended to talk to the assistants and ones where they didn't. So 
let's use the Siri thing. Intentional ones, you say, hey, Siri starts listening. Uh, oh, it just happened. It just happened on my phone. <laughs> That's okay. 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 So that type of thing, right? Where they could be listening right now, to be fair, right? Because that was a misfire. I hit it right off. The unintentional one happens when the digital assistant mistakenly thinks it hears its phrase, its wake phrase, as, as they call it, I suppose. This person calls it. I don't know if that's what they call it. Chris, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know. Trigger word? I don't know. Your howdy do word. Yeah. So, oh, that sounds dirtier than it needs to be. I don't want to use that. <laughs> Never mind. Let's not use that. Um, and then starts using things or recording sounds and speech that didn't, that wasn't intended to be communicated. Right. And now, I didn't think about this, but it does say that the recordings, these types of recordings are anonymized. So, so is claimed, right? So all this stuff, it gets anonymized. I mean, at some point, I would suppose you go further enough up the chain, you can figure out, but, but when it comes to review time, it's, it's not associated with identity. Um, now, the most interesting aspect of this article, the, the, the one, well, there's a lot of interesting things, but the most interesting thing was one that both Chris and I picked up on completely independently. And Chris, I want you to share this troubling tidbit of news when it comes to the digital assistant. Yeah, it says that... Uh... The person said Siri can be triggered by a quote-unquote zip, parentheses, or unzip sound, which could certainly, certainly could precede some sensitive dialogue. So <laughs> it's basically claiming that Siri can be, uh, its wake phrase may or may not be a zipper zipping or unzipping. Now, yes, um, typically casual conversations or me you know what i don't know in your I, life in my life i'm not this this is good i'm not a urinal talker if i am i am a man in case you couldn't tell from my voice i am a man and i will go to the bathroom and men have urinals i'm not one to chit chat over over a urination okay i don't know what your stance is chris i don't know I'm firmly in, in that camp as well. Yeah. So, um, Let's pretend none of us exist while we're in that room. That, that would be fantastic. I could do yes. a whole show on bathroom etiquette. Okay. Along with geodes, that's going to be quite a show. Um, so, but yes, one could assume that the zip unzip sound <laughs> would lead to some sensitive uh, conversations. Doctors, people playing doctors, uh, other people who definitely are not doctors, <laughs> but might be dressed up like nurses. I don't know, Chris. I'm not, I don't I, live that life. I do like that the guy also says, I was unable to replicate this okay. false positive. I kind of want to try that. Do you want to try that right now? Live yeah, on the you got show? A zipper. Yeah, go for well, it. I'm, okay, hold on. Entertain the people while I get a zipper. I'm imagining a scenario. This guy says he tries to replicate the false positive with several zippers at several distances, which I imagine were all on his pants and not from like a backpack or a laptop case. And then he's just zipping and unzipping his pants in front of his phone for research, for research, mom. Honey, it's for, honey, it's for research. Or do you think he just, Put on a whole bunch of different pairs of pants at on at the same time, <laughs> shorts, then jeans over that, then dress pants over that. I don't know why you do it in that order, but that's what he did. And then he was just zipping feverishly. That's dangerous, though. Okay, here I got a zip. You're going to attempt a zip right now. I'm doing it. Come on. Siri is not impressed. Well, that yeah. wasn't exhaustive, to be fair. It was only a pair of shorts. But yes, myth 
busted or Siri's just not interested in <laughs> where that conversation is going to go. So I don't know. Where do you land on the digital assistant thing? I personally don't have one and I kind of don't want to ever have one. So you, but don't use, you don't use I'm your also, Siri on your phone? not. No, because... I don't need though. Um, by the time I have to correct it, I'm like, I'll just, I'll just type it, honestly. Now, like, I do have a, a, an Alexa, um, which is 50% for checking the weather forecast. And the other 50% is for setting timers. Mm -hmm. So I don't I really... you were going to say the other 50% was for telling jokes. <laughs> no. Because she tells jokes. I know right. you know no, that. No, I tell Alexa jokes. I say, you Alexa, do. Have, you heard, have you heard this one? And she's like, and then, and then you tell your joke and, and she's like, that was, that was filthy. That's a filthy joke. How, how would you tell that to me? Even for, even as a machine, I'm offended by that filth that you just told me. But she's like, I, I could see how someone would think it's funny. To, you know, the way people react to digital assistants, uh, listening in. It's kind of like, I don't, I mean, what do you think you're inviting into your home? You know, you I mean, mean, it, it seems like by it, you're like, well, duh. Is that like, what you're right. saying? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, of, of course it is. Like, how do you think it works? Like it's, it's a yeah. machine. It's not somebody that's like, listen, between you and me, you know, I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a, it's a mechanical digital device connected to the internet run by Amazon. It, of course I mean, it's going to know and learn some things. That's so it's crazy. like, I mean, if that's your choice, like, then you got to live with it. I mean, I think for me also, like, it's just not at a point yet where the convenience benefits outweigh my concern over the privacy. Yeah. It's not there yet. Like, oh, great. I can get one second versus three seconds. Yeah, It's just but... not worth it to me. I mean, I love higher love, but I can wait three seconds to hear it because I already played it a minute and a half ago. So it's fine. I'm just hearing it again. <laughs> like, I don't need to, you know, like, it's just, it, it hasn't outweighed. And on the one hand, and here's, here's the, 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 the tricky thing is, okay, where could that switch happen? Okay, if you had it connected to a smart home. And that almost scares me even more. Yeah. Yeah. Alexa, open my front door or whatever. Like, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not an alarmist. And if anything, I definitely embrace technology as a digital marketer and just as a person. I love technology but i just can't make that turn on when it comes to the this digital assistant thing where again the benefit of getting a reminder done in three seconds versus the five seconds it takes me to write it it's just not it's not there yet yeah. you know so so again we bring this up because i, I oftentimes we're looking at this through the lens of social. Um, but I do think it's important because, um, you know, uh, while Apple doesn't have a social platform per se, um, th you know, they're, a, they're a big technology company that touch a lot of things. And Amazon certainly has an ads, uh, platform and a giant, if not the biggest possibly in the world, maybe, maybe second to Alibaba, but one of the largest, online marketplaces and therefore digital holdings of data in the world. You know, um, there's no one, there's no outlet, I think on the planet again, maybe with the exception of Alibaba that ha knows more about your spending habits than Amazon does. And by extension, maybe even your viewing habits and your, con your consumption habits. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, which is all well and good when it's used for good or just just there. And, you know, 
it, when it's convenient, but um, you know, I think there's it, it, it's important to kind of note there there could be a could be a dark side to that too. And so, when zipping or unzipping your pants, be sure that you have your phone off, right, Chris? Definitely, especially video mode. Yes, or switch to button fly. Then you're safe. <laughs> Chris, I forgot to mention this week we have a sponsor for the show. Hold on here. It's a Levi's button fly jeans. <laughs> Get Siri off your ass and out of your pants with Levi's button fly jeans. <laughs> All right, awesome. we're on the third segment, the miscellaneous. So I cannot wait to hear about these amethyst geodes. Go ahead. Uh, well, you know, uh, as usual, amethyst geodes. I really love them. Have I told you how much I love them? I would be <laughs> really if we didn't talk about them on this show. I would be really disappointed, and maybe Ooh. even maybe even to the point of like really angry. So I'm really excited you brought this to the table. Go ahead. Oh boy. <laughs> Sometimes is- I go to the caverns here. And I just stare. I, I, I pay in full admission. I just stare at the geodes in the gift shop. I don't even go in. I just look at the geodes in the gift shop. So I'm really excited. So whenever full you're ready, go ahead. Look, I, look let's just, let's just uh-huh. get it out of the way. Yeah. Uh, not only am I not talking about geodes. Oh, my God. I, I don't even uh, – I haven't really prepared much at all for this segment, <laughs> uh, which is my want. This is my segment, and I cannot prepare if I want to. What um, done? No, what I wanted to do today was sort of have an open dialogue for, uh, well, for, I don't know, people who need time management help, maybe, uh, for, for people, I don't want to say for procrastinators, but, but Ross, I know you're a, you're a big systems guy. You're a big, uh, sort of, uh, what, what am I thinking of? You're, you're, you're. You're all Just about love. I love systems and process and process. Yes. Productivity. Yes. So as I, was, <laughs> as I was wanting to prepare for this segment, uh, you know, I had a lot going on at my job and, and I was just like, you know what? I want to find out how to sort of take my work process or lack thereof and sort of harness that, um, I know that I'm somebody who works better uh, with a with a short deadline and with you know like just do it at the last minute. I don't know why. Call me a procrastinator, whatever. I prefer to just do off the top of my head and not overanalyze and not sit there and dwell on it and just get it done and out of the way, which usually leads to me waiting until the very last second to get something done. But I'm really curious to know how I can harness that, uh, you know, f- for the better to not, to not have to wait until the last minute, but still take that sort of, uh, you know, adrenaline spike of, of having to get it done right now. Um, which I guess is a way of saying, how do I turn being a procrastinator into something that works for me? <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. And you know, I, we, th- Throughout the show, we talked about uh, whether intentionally or unintentionally, um, a couple of different uh, productivity things and small business and entrepreneurial things. Um, last show, we talked about the five task rule, which I don't think, just to be clear, is is a great solution for anyone that is not uh, a business owner. We talked about this last show. If you if if you don't know about this or didn't listen to the last show, please, I encourage you. It is episode 11. Uh, it's up also broken out as its own segment on tripodpodcast.com. You can go give it a listen, the, the five-task rule. Um, I, and I don't think that's a, that's a good solution here either because it doesn't, you know, to your point of almost harnessing how you work best this crunch time type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't create that kind of, it, it doesn't create that kind of urgency. When you mentioned this to me this afternoon, the one thing that just kind of popped up 
was time blocking. Mm -hmm. Now, I will also say this productivity methods and even hacks and techniques and tips, they don't all, they don't work for everybody. Some will work for people. Some will not. You have to, but you have, I'm really big on, well, I'm really annoyed with people who bitch and moan about wanting to be more productive, but then don't put any time in to try something. Right. And that's, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes when you're trying to instill a pro, uh, some sort of new system, you are less productive at the beginning, but you have to ride that out. You have, because I can't tell you how many of these systems there was a, a time, I guess many, I don't know, careers, but many jobs ago, um, I was, uh, I, I chaired an innovation committee at a company and I was trying to figure out ways, uh, to, 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 you know, oh, different systems that maybe work. And there was a time where I was using three different productivity systems, which is highly unproductive, right? Yeah. But you have to like figure them out and you have to spend time with them. So <laughs> I don't think these are solu so let's get to the time blocking thing though directly time blocking the way it works is you look at and it all of this has to start with anyone putting in the time to figure out what you have to do that's the biggest problem people have I spend Sunday evening, sometimes even Monday morning, just figuring out my week before I even get into it. What am I doing this week? And lining up all my stuff. That's called being productive. Like <laughs> it, it's work. Like we're just, we're trying to be smarter about our work. And in the long game, you can be more productive. You can be smarter with your time, but you need to invest some in the beginning. And so time blocking, what you do is you'll, you look at your day and you can start your, you can start your, your, your day with this. What are the three things, right? I know this gets back into the five things, but like even you can do this. What are the three most important things that I need to do today? Right. Given that even though you work in an office, Chris, and you, you have multiple bosses pulling you in multiple different directions, you still have a good idea of maybe the three most important things. It doesn't mean they're going to be the three only things, sure. right? And you, you block out time, you know, because also you probably suffer like I used to with when you work in an office, everyone wants to have a fucking meeting about God knows what everyone wants to meet. Meetings are the worst. <laughs> they're the worst. They're, 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 they're one of the best things that have come from me owning a business. Doesn't mean I don't have to have meetings, but just the fact that I don't have like meetings that I have to go to that are completely worthless is a completely freeing experience. Um, and that will happen. So you have to move things around, but you say, okay, I'm going to put an hour to this. And the key here is to also break it down into bite-sized chunks right? So for you, maybe with your copywriting, you know, when you're doing some of that, maybe it's not to do the entire thing. Maybe it's to do a first draft, right? Yeah. And you maybe by time and by me, I'm thinking, I was just thinking that like, okay, maybe if you time block and you almost fake that, okay, it has to be done in this hour. Maybe you'll be able to almost like trick your brain. I don't know. Like that was the first thing that came to mind is to say, all right, I'm going to do this here and this here. And within that hour, you know, uh, you, you're essentially, like I said, trying to trick your brain into the urgency mode of getting it done, but it's hard. And I think it's probably very hard for you because that's a, we talked about this. It's a creative process Yeah. and you're trying to do that essentially in a bubble, but in a workplace where who knows what fire drill, whether an actual fire drill in your building or a f fake business fire drill that someone's again, oh, we should have a meeting or someone calls you or, you know, you, you, I think the other thing that's very freeing is to trying to disconnect from your email, which is so incredibly hard. And I think again, yeah. 
unrealistic in many corporate environments to do so entirely. It's very hard. Yeah, there's definitely a need when at the job, when at the office, uh, you know, I feel like I have to be on and and accessible the entire time I'm there, you know, yeah. Which, which, yeah, which definitely leads me to if I'm in the middle of something, you know, somebody will come and knock at my door or shoot me a message and say, like, hey, can you get to this? And there's that urge to get it done immediately because you want it off your plate. But but it's disruptive. I mean, it, it yeah, it'll throw me off my flow. Um, yeah. So I think you're right to that point that, yeah, you just sort of have to even if you got to, like, get on your calendar and put your out of office on or whatever, they don't have to know why, you know, but, well, yeah, I think just go dark for an hour. I, I'm telling you, you'd be surprised. And it's hard, man. Like I, I worked in media for 10 years. Like, yeah, everyone, if you didn't answer an email within like 10 minutes, it was like an emergency. Oh yeah. You know, you're at your door. Yeah. And that, that's like a whole different discussion about culture and expectations. But I will say, I think you'd be surprised at, even just like letting things ride for an hour. Yeah. What's the, you know what I'm saying? On, yeah. If someone sends you an email and you know, in your mind that you don't want to answer it, can you just ignore it for an yes. hour? Yes. Yes. I think you can, but I, but I also recognize very much that that's, it, it's a hard culture to, to boot on that because it's, I used to be an inbox zero person where you at the end of each day or throughout the day completely, you try to have no messages in your inbox. Okay. Oh yeah. As soon as one comes in, I want it gone. Okay. But here's the problem when you operate like, and I only realized this when, when I essentially adopted a different method, but when I stopped doing it was you become you are you are always in respond mode to someone else's problem or work that that right you are being reactive highly reactive you have no energy no time no effort for you yourself to be proactive for you to say well what the f what's important to me what's yeah. important for me to get done you know you are just you're just replying to everyone else. You're just, and again, I get, I, the last thing I want to do is sit here because there's so many of these productivity hacks that I used to look at and read about when I was working in a corporate environment. I'm like, that's an impossibility. It is impossible to do that unless you completely transformed an entire culture, which some places, maybe you can some places. There's no fucking way you're going to do that. Right. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. So trying to find that balance, right? Um, because I used to be the inbox zero person, but then I realized I never, I, first of all, the other thing that that does is it creates instant anxiety whenever an email comes in. Yeah. yeah instant yeah. anxiety. Email comes in. Oh shit. What's this about? Right. Oh shit. What's this about? Got to get it. Got to reply. Got to reply. I mean, and how can you like you're, it's just not a, I do. I don't really, I don't believe it's a healthy place to so, be in. Well, I guess it's different for you now, but it is, but uh, go ahead. like for, for me, I've like, my email is up on uh, Like it's one of the things I'm looking at constantly. Yep. My inbox is just always up and it's basically my desktop background. You use just out of curiosity. You use Outlook at work? Uh, no, just email. Oh, okay. Um, so you know, it's it's my number one tab. I've got yep. a bunch of tabs open, and Gmail is one of them. And I'm constantly waiting for something to come in to the point that I'm refreshing to make sure I haven't missed anything. Yeah, which yep. seems very dependent and unhealthy. I mean, I used to do that in Outlook. I mean, that's I get you. I'm with you. Like I'd refresh inbox. 
you know, because it's almost like then you start to worry. And it's like, how is this healthy again? Like, then you start to worry if nothing's coming in. Like, there's never there's never a comfort spot. Right. With it. You know, right. if it's empty. I, yeah, I feel like well, if clearly, it's empty, you're, clearly if something's it's, not coming to me. Yeah. Yeah. You don't feel a victory. Yeah. You're, you walk you out. You walk out. To the, yeah. Yeah. You're out in the in the middle of the building. Go, Somebody email me. Did is I email down? Is the internet down? I haven't got an email in 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely how it feels. It's a nonstop sense of urgency. Well, I would say this. I think so. What? And again, I'm not going to say that this necessarily would work for you. Only that it's a, it's something it's, it's a tactic and it is, um, I read about it. I want to say, hold on a second. I'm going to do the, uh, later. Um, it was the Zappos CEO. And I read about it and I can't even find the blog, but the blog post was like super small. Might not even be around anymore, but he used a, uh, uh, he explained a process that he called like a, like a later box. And so what he does, and by extension, what I do now, if combined with some other things, but if an email comes in, um, and it is not urgent, he, he, he explained this and, and forgive me if I find the blog, this may not be exact, but he takes it and puts it in a folder labeled tomorrow. You know, you're going to, you, and there's just an expectation. Now he, again, he's top of the heap so he can set a culture. Right. right of expectation. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I could not just say, yeah, tomorrow. No, but, but I think, but, but later, I think at least having this. Yeah. I think you could also apply a tag of later, right. And add you know, just apply a tag of later, you can, you know, and then three hours or now even with Gmail, and I don't know if you're using G suite or something like that, you can set up something to essentially, there used to be a, an extension called boomerang for like an email to come back in your inbox at a later time. I think at least, I think the first step is at least thinking about the times when you can do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 and actually, doing it and seeing if the house catches fire with doing it, you know? Yeah. I know for a lot of your stuff, you can't do that, but maybe if you start to kind of like at least have it in your brain and flex that muscle, maybe you'll find there are more instances where you can do that. You know, right. I suppose, I mean, nobody goes to their physical mailbox every hour, every five minutes to make sure that, something See, hasn't come in you, you you check it once a day well that's the thing i i think that when you're in that an office everyone is similarly like you they all just are like have their their inbox open all day but that's a habit i have worked to get myself out of even running the company and being an entrepreneur and a business owner is i try not to have my my email open all day And then I close it for the rest of the day. And I yeah, work I on think, stuff. I want to say, don't you even have like a message, like an, yeah. like an auto message that and pops I got up that, that from says Tim that. Ferriss. I got that from Tim Ferriss for his four hour work week. It's because I think that is where you start to, because if you just do that, but you don't necessarily communicate it to people, then, then they don't necessarily know the expectation. Right? So when right. I do that, and by having in my, it's on all the time. It's an auto response. Whenever anyone emails me, they all get it. I check my email twice a day and I reply to stuff twice a day. Uh, noon, noon to one and four o'clock, like four to five, end of day. Middle of the day, end of day. Yeah. And outside of that, I'm trying not to be in my email. And if you have an emergency, call me. Guess how many times someone has called me? Zero times. Now that might just be because they don't read that, which is fine. <laughs> Whatever. Sure. But 
I've said, I've said, I've set the stage to say, this is how I operate. Now, that I, I'm lucky in that way. And I'm not going to say that that will work for you, but, but I think what's important is maybe thinking about these things. Like how are things, even on a little scale, how could you do it? You know, cause it all starts with these little things. You establish this, I'll say bad habit or this challenge, this challenging habit through little things. Right. And I think it is really hard to let go of the email of replying immediately, but oftentimes I mean, I even found this actually more so in the corporate world where sometimes you just step back. The problem will find its own, like it finds a, it finds a solution because people right. just like default to emailing about everything. It's like, get up, walk around the, you know, sometimes they find the answer without, you know, you having to reply, but you have to, you have to, you know, those people in, you know, you know who those people are. Right. Sure. You know who those people are in your office. Just like I know who the people were in my office where it's like they're either claiming it's urgent or they're emailing me this and I'm going to see them in a meeting in, in an hour. Like it can wait till then. I'll just tell them in person. Yeah, you know? there are definitely, I mean, that is the problem with the office culture. Some people think that everything of theirs is urgent, you know, and you know, oh, of course to answer to. And you got to be polite. You don't want to be rude. Well, that's tell them like, too. hey, that's come on. Hell. Like, yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. Few and far between. Do I ever send a like uh, bubbly email? Emails utility for me. Like why? Oh, how was your weekend? I don't give a fuck. I'm I am writing. Well, the other thing, too, is people who write long emails. You talk about that drives me crazy. I want to m murder people who write long emails. It's the worst. They're the worst. <laughs> They're the worst people in the world. So if it's more than five sentences, pick up the phone or come and talk to me. That's because it's too involved. Once the, like, you know, like email has become such a crutch for people um, to just put everything in email. It's just like, oh God, it's, it's exhausting. And that's kind of part of the problem, I think, is that it's, that's the challenge. Now we've gone off on an email tangent without really coming back that's to okay. solving your problem. That's but okay. Somebody, I think, I, mean, I think the there's problem, a lot for people to learn. The problem is rooted, I think, in a great deal in, in, in email culture when it comes to workplaces. Yeah. I really believe that. Like it is so rooted in, in, in this, this, you know, uh, challenge of keeping up with email and the every, like you said, everyone's important and everything's urgent. It's not, it's not. I mean, yeah, a lot of times when I sit down to write copy, you know, I can't even get 20 minutes into something without an email coming in and that person needing something right now. Yeah. Which it's like, no, you don't. Yeah. And I need to learn to not check it and they'll, yeah. and they'll be okay. Yeah. And they I'll probably okay. will. They probably, they probably will, you know, or again, you just, you get to figure out who can handle it better than others. You know, yeah. like that, that's, you know, or so I, I think, I think it's, it's a lot harder. All these things are a lot harder when you work in an, in, in a proper, when you work in an office and you're not able to set culture, yeah. you know? That doesn't mean you still can't set your own kind of culture, but it, but it, it, sometimes it just can't coexist, you know, or, or it has to be scaled down significantly. Um, you know, but, but I, I do think potentially the time blocking, uh, piece could, could be helpful. Um, I think trying to figure out that email stuff could be helpful and, um, you know, um, some of the techniques we talked about again, I, I really like the, I do like the, the, if I can find the blog post, I will put in the show notes for tripodpodcast.com. Um, I already use it so I can explain it a little bit, but the tomorrow, uh, inbox. Um, and, um, the other thing too, Chris, to think about, mm -hmm. particularly with Gmail, you, and I'm pretty sure yours might have, has a send later feature now. Yeah. 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 I utilize the hell out of that. Okay. Because, 
you know, then it's one of those things where that's why I also do it. Check my emails noon and four, you know, to be honest with you, like sending an email at four o'clock. I know that person's not going to get back, get to it till the next day. Well, that's fine. I don't care. Like, but that's intentional. It's like, we don't need to have 10 exchanges on this probably, you know, and sometimes I'll send those where it's like, you know, you send them at the end of the day, cross it off your list. But you know, you're most likely not going to get a response till the next day. Okay. That's fine. You know, you can kind of use that to your advantage too, just to manage your own workload. Or just tell people to leave me the hell alone. Yeah. That would be a good one too. That's very direct though. You're going to have to get a real big sign and probably but effective, but uh, I think effective. I mean, you, you know, your workplace better than I do. So, you know, <laughs> with some, it might be effective. Others, not effective. It won't work. So I hope, uh, you listener land, this was helpful. Maybe this was some of the woes that you've had. If you, um, have, have, have some productivity, uh, hacks, advice, tips, um, you can, uh, drop them in the comments on our show notes, tripodpodcast.com. You can send them to Chris directly. Uh, Chris, what's the best way? Uh, you like the gram Instagram? They yeah. Can I like Instagram. Message? Yeah. Okay. You may what's your uh, handle? Chris, ruthless Chris Steakhouse on Instagram. Yeah. Send them some tips. Give them some help out there. And, uh, we will see you not really see you. Well, actually, maybe soon we'll see you. We are working on doing um, a live stream. So that might be coming soon to your eyeball holes. Um, but really, next time, probably be your ear holes. And that will be episode, oh, unlucky episode number 13, Chris. Uh-oh. Oh, spooky. Uh-oh, spooky. So we'll see you then. This has been Tripod. It's the Tricycle Creative Marketing Podcast. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, uh, whatever, uh, wherever you are hearing this. Chris, parting words? Uh, No, but thank you for coming to my office therapy session. You're very welcome. Um, I I do accept insurance, so your copay will be uh, $50. Sweet. Lucky guy. Now I'm going to go zip and unzip and see if Siri hears what I'm saying. Thanks for listening to Tripod. For show notes and bonus content, go to tripodpodcast.com. Connect with Tricycle Creative on Facebook and Instagram at Hello Tricycle. Connect with Ross at Ross Hero. Connect with Chris on Instagram at Ruthless Chris Steakhouse. <laughs>